Hello again Struck Quap. Uh, today I'm bringing you another build video for Torchlight 3 and this one is for the Disc Mage class with the Flaming Destroyer subclass. I've coded the Pyro Smasher because it's using Sword Smash uh, as a main spamming skill from the Relic and it's also using Summoning Smash and uh, on top of that I'm using some nice light and dark skills. You can check the timestamps in the description or you can just click on the chapters in the YouTube video player at the bottom to skip ahead to certain parts uh, if you want to. Um, now let's uh, talk about uh, what I feel like this build can do. This build can do decent damage, especially if you get damage to energy spike uh, items or damage to Absolver items. Absolver is our main um, light buff bar builder and energy spike together with dark spears would be our dark buff bar builders. I've decided to also include for some survivability not direct but indirect by reducing the damage enemies do uh, some damnation. Damnation reduces the enemy damage by um, 50% and you can see uh, with my current setup I did just now on Ridiculous on a trash mob 593k and this is thanks to um, energy spike plus percent damage items. You can see when, when I played well when I have my um, my skills ready for the boss, the boss dies quickly. When I don't have all the skills ready or I don't play it well and I don't use energy spike as much uh, and I don't have harmonic form for the boss fight, this happens and it's a little bit slower. So I just wanted to show you the difference between um, being prepared for the boss with harmonic form or not um, what it might look like. In general the, the, the build is fun and it's all about using sword smash to dump energy and um, that energy translates into summoning smash and the more you dump energy the more you generate energy for summoning smash and the better it is and unfortunately i couldn't get any of the new set items so in the skill and gear segment i would be mentioning ideally when they fix certain things that are broken how you might want to take the most advantage out of the new set items so let's go to the skills first so the skills I would suggest for this build, uh, I would first go through them and then talk about why I'm taking which one. So I've decided to put 8 points into Absolver, 4 points into Holy Fury, 4 points Light Spear, 4 points Holy Bolt, 4 points Entropy, 4 points Damnation, 8 points Energy Spike, 4 points Shadow Step, 4 points Unholy Bolt and 4, po 4 points Dark Spears. Now we've got uh, Sword Smash level 10. Summoning Smash level 10 and the remaining two points I put into Energizer. Now let's talk about each point, uh, I mean about each skill, why I'm putting the points this way. This can be replaced with another skill. If you don't want to use Absolver for damage, you can remove four points and put four points into Holy Bolt or remove four points from this one, put four points into Holy Fury and use that one as a main skill or remove all eight points, lose that extra 10% damage, which is pretty decent. And then put the points into Radiant Blast if you want to uh, play with Radiant Blast as your light buff bar generator. This one we put the points uh, just to get the passive tier 2 bonus and in this one we put the points just to get the, pass and the passive bonus and in this one as well just to get the passive bonus. Um, the same goes for uh, Unholy Boat, we only use it for the passive bonus and Entropy, which we only use for the passive bonus. And this brings us to Entropy. If you want to use Entropy, you can remove 4 points from Energy Spike, leave it at uh, tier 2 for just the passive bonus, and then put those points into Entropy and then replace um, the active uh, Energy Spike with Entropy. That's an option. You could also use uh, Unholy Boat maxed out with uh, the Unholy Flask, with the Soul Flask, and that could also work uh, and it could be your uh, your dark buff bar generator. Light Spears, I like the cooldown reduction from it even though right now it's broken and they're currently working on fixing it. See the cooldown works for Dark Spears but the cooldown doesn't reduce the cooldown of Shadow Step, it doesn't reduce the cooldown of Energy Spike and um, I'm not sure whether it will reduce the cooldown of Entropy because I don't have the Molten Reach that gives it the cooldown but it does reduce the cooldown of Damnation and itself, but it does not reduce the cooldown of Light Spear um, and I don't know about Radiant Blast's cooldown when we equip the, the, um, the legendary item that gives it the cooldown. 
in any case um, I still like the cooldown reduction and eventually you would really benefit from it because this can shave 0.4 seconds from energy spikes cooldown so if you don't want that just keep it as the tier 1 bonus because the duration really helps this is a great skill to build the dark buff bar I can demonstrate what I'm talking about so there's three enemies there we just put it there and you can see how it starts building the dark buff bar it's not quick but it does build it up and that just adds up so yeah with one cast for that extra duration we built like uh, almost 60% uh, or so so it's pretty decent now shadow step uh, tier 1 is something um, that's okay but I don't really rely on it but the tier 2 bonus is amazing so not only do we use it as a movement skill but, uh, movement skill, but you, we can also get that 15% mana regeneration and Damnation is something that's just my uh, flavor of the build you can replace Damnation if you don't want it but I like the tier 2 bonus and I like hitting an enemy affected by Damnation returning 5% mana once every uh, second so that's not bad and first of all it also gives you damage reduction not to you but reduces the damage enemies do so I think this is pretty decent for more, more squishy builds that kind of uh, require a little bit of extra survivability and Damnation fits very well there so as I said you can replace this with Entropy you can replace it with Unholy Bolt and you can replace this with one of those three skills here we are maxing out Sword Smash so we can max out the uh, energy dumping so we can max out the summoning smash spamming um, and uh, the remaining two points for extra relic energy charge this 10% stacks with this so we get 20 um, if you get lucky and get plus 3 uh, skill levels to Sword Smash or summoning smash or any of those skills that you use and that you can remove some points from um, it would be perfect it would be perfect because that would allow you to to max out energizer with those extra three points right now i've got three points to spirit well unlucky because i'm not using spirit well for this build but it's doable um, the perfect setup would include three points into this this anything that we that we use in our active skill bar uh, would be fine so that we can just uh, lower the skill to to three points less and um, and put those points into energizer uh, so now there's something I want to mention with the latest patch they made it so we can use skills that we haven't put one point into so this one is level 2 from my uh, chest piece and um, helmet uh, the celestial this is actually from the chest piece but um, th those ones are level 2 from the helmet and we can use them I can I can replace this with spirit well if I want to, I can replace it with uh, uh, what else, uh, with light spear, um, with uh, holy fury etc, anything anything uh, gets leveled up to level 2 at least and you can use it, you can use it now um, even if you haven't put a point as long as you have the celestial um, chest and helmet for the bonuses and I think a very good option would be using consecration or luminous run if you want more mobility or you can even experiment with some spirit well to, to let those summons do do their thing you can even try using entropy so you can have uh, energy spike and entropy especially if you get that uh, uh, what's it called that cooldown item the molten reach so you you do entropy then you do energy spike and then you maybe uh, start doing your light skills and so on so there's many ways you can uh, modify this build another way to modify the build would be Quoke of Flames you can put it as a one point or two points and uh, Quoke Flames you would see why I would suggest because there's some new items that could give you some sort of synergy with Quoke of Flames and we're moving on to those items in a moment when we start talking about the Legendarium in fact I think it's pretty much clear over here uh, about those skills so let's move on to the legendarium and then the pet skills in the legendarium egg of mayhem you would want that but in the ideal build I would actually wear the egg of mayhem and I would talk about the ideal build in a moment then celestial cuirass uh, over here but in the ideal build it might be uh, when they when they fix certain affixes that are not dropping for legendary items we might need to even wear this one and here it's optional 
You can put Ebon Grasp, you can put um, some other things, you can put select your pants if you're not wearing them. Um, there's many many options what to put here uh, and from the new set items I would strongly suggest checking out the, the Ancient Ember Boots which would uh, require one of your skill bar swats. Uh, right now I'm, I'm not using the basic attack but I can use it uh, if, I, if I want to or I can just put it in the basic attack swat. Or I can remove Consecration, that's also not that bad of a um, thing. But see, Ancient Ember Boots would be v very nice for this build. Another thing that's nice for this build would be um, the Ancient Ember Gloves. Although Ancient Ember Gloves is better for uh, proc monster builds, honestly. But since we have leveled up Sword Smash, maybe this is gonna do Sword Smash with the increased damage. And I'm not sure whether this can proc Egg of Mayhem. It would be interesting to figure out whether this Sword Smash would proc Egg of Mayhem. Um, and then, another thing worth considering would be the Ancient Ember Shoulders. Uh, since we are spamming sw summoning Smash as often as we can, um, it's pretty nice so we can get some random shrine effects there. Uh, other things that are not bad, Ancient Ember Helm, and this is why I mentioned Cloak of Flames. With Cloak of Flames, as I mentioned, see, while it's active, you can conjure earthen spikes from the ground at a, at a nearby enemy dealing 100% weapon damage. It doesn't say how often this triggers, and uh, yeah, um, this hits twice as many enemies. Uh, meaning uh, two enemies, because if it says it nearby enemy one, then that probably hits two. So ideally in my setup I would want uh, the shoulders from this set, the boots from this set, and then either the gauntlets or the helmet. Um, right now I would prefer the gauntlets, but if you use Cloak of Flames the helmet is not bad. Um, and then you would want three pieces of the Celestial set. Actually you would want four pieces of the Celestial set, you would want the mask the gauntlets, the boots and the chest. And since uh, you're gonna be using boots and gauntlets from um, the other uh, from the other set, uh, you would have to swat them. Uh, and that means you would have to make, uh, make way, make room uh, in the legendarium. That's why I said uh, wearing the Egg of Mayhem. I'm gonna talk again about this in the gear segment, so maybe I would be repeating myself. But I hope this is clear how you might wanna squeeze some more uh, goody good stuff from um, from the legendarium and from the new set. Now for the pets I keep it simple. Uh, I go for crits, I go for healing and the rest is up for you to decide what you would wanna um, be filling the swats with. Uh, I, s I prefer using battle cry, sometimes I switch to defensive posture if my defenses are tragic. And I like immobilizing strike in builds uh, where I'm ranged so I can keep the enemies at bay. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for the pet skills. Next I will talk about gear and um, I would probably go into detail again about the new items. And here we are at the gear segment where I would talk about my items and my pet's items and some suggested affixes and what uh, you might want to do when they fix certain things that are buggy at the moment. So first of all on your weapon for now you would want a uh, blue rare digitus with um, flat damage regardless of what type at the top, flat damage two times regardless what at the bottom and flat damage um, at uh, the socket in the socket regardless of what type. For now um, you cannot get flat damages on legendary weapons. So this legendary weapon has flat damage at the top but in the middle uh, and uh, it can't get flat damage. And this is something that has been confirmed as a bug. Uh, Michael uh, May, uh, game designer from the game said that every legendary item should be able to get every legendary affix a blue item of the same type is getting. Meaning uh, Weapons, uh, legendary weapons should be able to get uh, flat uh, elemental and uh, and that would be amazing. Um, it, would, it would open up a lot of builds using legendary items equipped. Yeah, you're losing the wife bound, but in general the legendary items have a little bit more stats. Maybe not as much as 20% but maybe 10-15% more stats. So it's not gonna be that big of a loss and blue items would still be viable maybe to squeeze a little bit extra damage. But with the legendary items you can get one extra affix and you can get a legendary affix as well. So 
keep that in mind. Uh, changes are coming and uh, every single build of mine where I was saying use blue weapons, use blue chest, use blue legs, uh, use blue boots uh, because they can get certain affixes that the legendaries cannot. This is changing and legendaries will be able to. What do I mean about uh, legs and, uh, and chest and boots? Well, um, chest cannot get right now poison damage flat and poison damage percent and any other elemental basically elemental damage flat and elemental damage percent can roll on chest uh, from blue and green but not on legendary right now and this is getting fixed soon um, leg armor uh, as well legendary leg armor cannot get uh, flat damages like flat physical flat poison uh, etc or per uh, or or uh, or percent physical percent poison but the the blue ones can blue ones can give you fat uh, physical or any type of other element and uh, the percent of the same element um, and boots cannot give you fat in blue and green but they can give you percent of that uh, of, of any element with blue and green but um, the legendary ones cannot so right now again um, for now it's still probably uh, in some cases better to use. Um, the blue ones, but um, here's the thing, flat damage is not as good as percent damage with put skill there, in my case energy spike or absorber, so percent damage with absorber or percent damage with energy spike would be better than stacking flat damage, which means even legendary items are good for now. For this build, I found out that stacking uh, damage with energy spike gives me much better damage. So I'm stacking 32% here and 28% here and 26% here. And if you're lucky, you're gonna get legendary items from the ones I mentioned in the skill segment in the legendarium um, about those. So I'm gonna mention those items in a moment again. So let's go through, um, through the items you would want. You would want celestial mask, celestial gauntlets, celestial boots and the celestial chest. Wear three of those and uh, swat one in the legendarium. And then other items you would want from the new set uh, would be either three or four of the items I mentioned. And that would be the ancient ember shoulders, the ancient ember boots. And uh, you would either want the ancient ember gauntlets for this build or if you decide to put points into Cloak of Flames, maybe experiment with the ancient ember helm. So we've got gloves, boots and shoulders from this one set. So let's say we use the gloves, boots and shoulders. That means we have to swat the celestial gauntlets and the celestial boots. Um, and then wear the celestial mask the celestial uh, chest and the celestial pants so we wear those three from one set we wear those three from the other set and we we in and we swap those two from the uh, from the celestial set that's one way to do it if you decide to replace um, one of the other things for the mask from the other set of course you would have to rework it but yeah let's say that's gonna be my meta my, my preferred setup when they add uh, all the affixes I want so um, wear boots gauntlets and shoulders from the new set then uh, wear celestial pants celestial uh, chest celestial mask and then swap the celestial gauntlets and the celestial boots in the legendarium and then either wear the egg of mayhem or swat it but if you swat the Egg of Mayhem, you're not gonna have one extra swat for anything else. And you might want to, to put something else as well in the Legendarium. Um, and ideally you might wear uh, something like an Ebon Grasp once they fix it. Um, to, to be able to get the blue affixes that it can't get right now. And let's go through some affixes. On your helmet you would want crit chance, ideally maybe some mana again and uh, maybe 3 points to a certain skill you're using or some extra defense. On the gauntlets you would want defense instead of evasion like me, more defense instead of evasion. Relic energy cost is good um, and uh, uh, relic, uh, relic energy generation is not bad and you can even get a uh, chance to do certain ailment which we don't need for this build. On the boots you would want mana again, crit damage, uh, maybe defense and some of the, the, the damage in Kha'Fix if you can get it. On the shoulders you would want damage with energy spike or damage with absorber. Pick one skill, stick to that. 
Uh, it's much better if you stack uh, damage with energy spike with damage with energy spike from multiple items. Uh, but of course if you get lucky and get an item that gives you damage with energy spike and damage with absorber, the same way this gives us energy spike and spirit well, or this one gives us holy fury and energy spike, of course, try to get energy spike and absorber together. But I would suggest uh, focusing on damage with energy spike or entropy if you're using entropy. Um, so you want uh, that damage here, you want that damage here, you want that damage here. Here you want also crit chance, here you would want also crit damage. Uh, or flat damage and here you could also get flat damage if you're lucky with energy spike one instead of HP you would want defense uh, and um, yeah try to get as much defense don't stack too much evasion or block chance I prefer to go for defense but if you stack evasion and block chance uh, those are good if you go 40% uh, on each so 40% block chance 40% evasion would give you 36% uh, chance to get hit which is a decent, um, decent low number of chance to get hit. So, um, you would ideally want a shield. It doesn't matter which one. Of course, something like a firewall or whatever else would be nice. But you would want shield with very high defense, more defense, and even more defense if you can get it instead of HP, and then socket it for even more defense. And of course, every shield comes with the built-in block chance. So if you have like 9, 10, 11,000 at the top with some block, then at the bottom, let's say electric 11, 12,000, 13,000, then fire 11, 12, 13,000, and then maybe add poison, you would have of every type um, over 10k uh, together with the regular 10k, that would be my ideal choice. So in this shield, the only thing I would change is instead of HP, fire or poison, and then in the socket, um, the missing element for form. In my case, if I get uh, poison instead of HP, I would put fire. If I get fire instead of HP, I would put poison in the socket. And make sure to socket everything for defense, uh, either elemental or regular. Um, and of course, socket this for flat damage. Now, crit chance and crit damage are good stats, um, and um, those cap at uh, those cap at 30, uh, at 40 percent. And right now, I'm not sure why my pet isn't giving me my crit chance aura but it should give me 15% crit chance aura. So, um, yeah, with uh, with the crit chance right now for me is 25. And this 25 gets added to those 10% and those 10% and that puts me at 35% crit chance with dark and light skills. So my sword smash and summoning smash are at 25, my other things are at uh, 35. And 40 is the cap. Crit damage cap is... Um, and the crit damage cap is 300%, right now I'm pretty bad with that. And by the way, this number here does not include the damage with energy spike that I've got. And my energy spike is doing close to 600,000 on trash mobs, on ridiculous when I'm inside the consecration. You can see energy spike is doing 1708 weapon damage. That is including um, this 20% here, and then this uh, 26, 28 and... Um, 32% extra damage. So the skill without my items, just with the with the unholy bolt bonus, does 991% weapon damage, just with the 20% from unholy bolt. So I've almost got it double the damage. And uh, as I said, flat damage does not make it better. I've tested it. I can even show you. Look at my damage now. Uh, okay, uh, I need to quickly enable that damage, so let's show you quickly the damage. So there's the damage now. 197,000 crit. And now let's put flat instead of, uh, instead of the regular, where was it? I had something with flat somewhere here. Flat instead of the 28% and... And it's 192,000 um, crit. And um, this becomes a much bigger difference when you're in harmonic form. So as I said, uh, certain things are just uh, better um, than the flat. And yeah, stack those bonuses. I think that that maybe is it for the items for me. Let's talk quickly about the pet. Dryad neckband is your, at least my preferred choice. And on the Dryad neckband, I want faster cooldown for pet active skills and pet attack speed. I want faster cooldown and pet attack speed on my tokens, on my tax. And my preferred tax would be 
uh, because I like sending the pet to the town often rapid bartering and I like invigoration for that cooldown but other choices would be the phoenix one that lets you revive your pet and um, uh, maybe one of the novas or maybe maybe the contagion um, even the ancient one but I will not suggest it for this build but right now I'm wearing the three top choices for me Drat, Neckband, Token of Invigoration and Rapid Bartering for farming but that pretty, mu pretty much is it uh, for the gear, let's move on to showing you some more gameplay footage. Here we are at the gameplay segment where I show you more footage of the build in action and talk about how you might want to rotate um, the combos. In general, most of the times you might want to start with uh, either uh, Consecration or with Dark Spears and Damnation and then Consecration. I prefer using Consecration first because even though Dark Spears doesn't do much damage, it still does uh, extra damage uh, if I'm standing in the Consecration when I use Dark, Sk Dark Spears, so it's not bad. After Dark Spears you would use uh, Damnation to make the enemies do less damage and from then on I would suggest going for Energy Spike and spamming Absolver. If you have energy, of course, you might want to spam a few um, sword smashes, dump that sword smash there and proc some things with the Egg of Mayhem. So there's kind of, you have to find a balance between spamming sword smash and spamming Absolver. You need Absolver to build the light buff bar, but you also need uh, sword smash because, well, it uh, dumps energy and lets you cast uh, summoning smash more often. So once you find that balance between Absolver and sword smash, it becomes pretty fun. In general, um, once you buff up your um, Relic Energy, you can ignore Absolver and just focus on Sword Smash and uh, and uh, what's its name and uh, Energy Spike. So Energy Spike does a ton of damage. Uh, when boosted by skills and when you have harmonic form. Uh, it's such a great nuke and I really love it. If you're using Entropy, um, Entropy is also decent, but uh, it's on a longer cooldown when you use the Molten Reach. But uh, thankfully the build, is, um, the build is flexible and you can pick whatever skills you want to use. If you don't like Energy Spike, and Entropy is a good combo. In fact, my preferred choice would be uh, Entropy level 8, Energy Spike level 4. But you might want to do it in a different way. To get notified when I upload more content uh, like this or similar for this game or other games like it, uh, such as Wooters of all varieties, you could subscribe to my channel, hit the bell button to not miss out on notifications and optionally you can even join as a member of the Struck Club and get access to emotes, badges or other perks such as private tutorials and things like that. And I would like to use this part of the video to thank the people who are currently YouTube members of the Struck Club. Thanks for watching this video, keep it cool and until next time Struck Club, goodbye.